Hey everybody, David Warner here with another M365 video SharePoint short. Today's video, we're going to keep talking about column formatting and Visual Studio Code. We're going to see how we can create nested HTML elements to create an anchor tag and a hyperlink. We're also going to see how we can use abstract syntax and Excel formatting to reference other data in other columns in the same list item to dynamically generate our column formatting enhancement. Let's take a look. To get us started, we're going to begin by taking a look at the column formatting enhancement sample that we started creating in our last video. Now this is a very simple column formatting enhancement. We're just taking a column here, social pick, which identifies usernames for Twitter or Instagram, and it just replaces it and puts it in a div. We can see over here in our column formatting uh, text box, all we're really doing is displaying the current field inside of a div with the class name column div. Obviously, though, this is not of much value. So let's take it to the next level. Let's say we want to go ahead and replace the current value of the username with a hyperlink that actually connects directly to Twitter or Instagram. Let's jump over to Visual Studio Code and see how we can do that. So here we see the JSON for our very simple column formatting enhancement. It simply creates a div, assigns it a class name column div, and then populates it with the exact same field value that's already in the field. Not real useful. So what we want to do is we want to convert it to use a hyperlink instead of just simply displaying the current field. So to do that, we'll want to start by getting rid of the current field value. So we'll go ahead and delete that. And then we'll want to start relying on our IntelliSense again. We'll go ahead and hit uh, Control Spacebar. And we see that it gives us a few options. It's aware of what it is that we want to include. In this case, we actually want a, a child tag to be included within the div. So we see the selection there of, or the option there of children. We'll go ahead and hit that. And it does some pre-population for us. Uh, children could be an array. Uh, so it could be many things. It could be a div and another div. It could be a div and a span. So we see it creates an array for us so that it could include many things. So now if we go ahead and hit our control space bar again, it lets us know we need to create a new object. And this object will be representative in this case of our hyperlink. So we'll go ahead and hit enter. We'll again rely on uh, our IntelliSense control spacebar, and we see now we're kind of within a fresh object here. It could be an element or many things. We're obviously going to create an anchor tag, so we want to go ahead and scroll down to element type, or ELM type. We'll go ahead and hit that, and we know that we want to create an anchor tag, so we'll go ahead and select the A option. Now obviously the anchor tag by itself is of no value. At this point, all it is is an empty anchor tag. It doesn't have a hyperlink or href attribute. Uh, it doesn't display anything. So we'll wanna go ahead and tell it what to do next. Go ahead and hit comma and then hit the enter space. And then we'll hit control space and we'll see what we've got some options. The next best option is attributes because we know we wanna add an href uh, value. So we'll go ahead and select attributes. Again, it pre-populates some of these things for us. You see it created the object closing and ending, or opening and closing tag. So we'll go ahead and hit control space again, and we've got the href option now. So we'll go ahead and hit that, and we'll hit colon. And again, we see it helping us by telling us what can come next. We know it's going to need an object. Now the reason we're creating an object here instead of a, just a double quoted value like we have, for example, with class up here, is because we want our href to be dynamic. We want it to include the .com reference to Twitter or Instagram, but then to make it truly useful, it needs to include the value there within the column, which is our username. Now, when you start creating dynamic content as we're getting ready to do with our href value, there's a couple formats that you can do it as of September 2018. The most uh, compatible to on-prem and online is called abstract tree syntax. It's a little more verbose. It's what we're going to use in this sample, uh, but it is the most compatible. The alternative is Excel style formatting. Now, uh, they're like Excel formulas. They're a lot simpler to write, but as of September 2018, they're only compatible with online. I'll reference and show more information on this later uh, in the video. So we know that to make our hyperlink dynamic, we need to combine some content from a few different elements. Uh, we know our list had a column called social network that identified whether or not the account in that list item belonged to Twitter or Instagram. And then we had a social pick column that identified the username for that particular uh, social service, whether it was Twitter or Instagram. And so what we need to do is we need to create a formula here and we're gonna use the abstract tree syntax to combine all of the needed elements to generate that href or that hyperlink value dynamically. So we're gonna go back to our trusty IntelliSense. We're gonna select the control space 
and we see we're provided with uh, options of a couple of new items, operands and operator. Now these two things allow us to do a variety of mathematical equations, comparisons of strings. In this case, we're just going to simply concatenate data. So we're gonna start out with our operator. We'll go ahead and select that. And we see we're giving a, a number of options to choose from. In this case, like I said, we wanna concatenate strings, so we'll go ahead and select the plus. From here, we need to tell it what it is that we wanna concatenate. So we'll go ahead and we'll select a comma and we'll go to the next line and we'll cont uh, hit control space and that'll again bring up the IntelliSense. It knows that we've already provided the operator so it only gives us the operands option. When we select that, we see that it then pre-creates for us the array option. So from here, what SharePoint will be expecting is a collection of comma-separated values that are either hard-coded or dynamic, and that's exactly what we're gonna provide. We need to provide some hard-coded values for the HTTP and WWW values, the .com values, but what needs to be dynamic is uh, the social network that's going to be referenced and the current field which identifies our social network username. So we wanna go ahead and start building our hyperlink. We know that any hyperlink starts with HTTP, dub, dub, dub. So we'll go ahead and add that in. We'll include the dot. We'll go to the end, we'll add a comma, because again, it's a collection of comma separated values. And then we're gonna go ahead and hit enter. Now at this point, we know next needs to be the social network. This is gonna be a dynamic value coming from that social network column. I've copied that to my clipboard just for brevity. We see that what makes us, uh, what gives us the opportunity to reference other columns here is the makeup of two brackets, a dollar sign, and then the name of the column that we're wanting to reference. In this case, the column name was social network with a space, so we see the extra characters have been added so that SharePoint knows exactly how to reference that. From there, we'll go ahead and hit enter again. We need to close it with the dot com and a forward slash. And then we'll go ahead and hit another comma. And at this point, this is where we wanna include the social network uh, username, which we know is our current field. So we'll go ahead and hit uh, quotes and we'll do our current field. And now that goes ahead and makes up the hyperlink value for our href. Now, being that this is a hyperlink that's connecting outside of SharePoint, mm -hmm. it's probably a good idea to set this href or hyperlink to open in a new window. That's just another attribute in addition to the href. So what we wanna do is we wanna move outside of the href. We see that it's made up of this bracket. We see IntelliSense or, or highlighting helps us here in VS Code. So we'll go to the end of its bracket, we'll hit a column, and then we'll go to the next line and rely on our trusty IntelliSense. And we see that there's a target option. Go ahead and select that. And now, just like any of the other values, it's not dynamic, we're gonna hard code it. So we can just go ahead and put underscore blank here inside of quotes as a hard coded value. And now we've got a target going to be added to our anchor tag as an element that will open the hyperlink in a new window. At this point, the only thing that's missing is the actual display of, a, of content. Uh, this would work, but it would be an empty anchor tag. So we wanna add another value to our JSON here. We'll go ahead and we know it's no longer an attribute we're going to add, so we're gonna to go to the end of our attributes object and we'll go ahead and hit a comma and we'll go to the next line. Again, IntelliSense lets us know what we want to be displayed. From our previous video, we know we just need to select text content and at this point, we just wanna go ahead and include the display of our username again. That will act as, as our hyperlink. So we'll go ahead and do current field. Now at this point, we have a complete column formatting enhancement JSON that we can use. So let's go ahead and select all, copy, and let's move over back into the browser and see how this works. So here we are back in our list. We see the original column formatting enhancement that just simply wraps uh, the social pick value in a div is still in place. So all we need to do is select into our format column text box, select all, you know, and paste what we just copied out of Visual Studio Code. It's kind of hard to read there, obviously. There's all kinds of uh, formatting being applied, but we don't need to worry about that. All we need to do is select Preview. And we see that visually what's changed is our labels now have become links. If you look down here in the lower left-hand corner of the browser, as I hover over each of these accounts, you can see it changes. There's Twitter for my Twitter account. There's the Instagram account for Surface and there's Chris Kent's Twitter account. And if we click on any one of these, I'll go ahead and click on my own, we see that it's opened up my Twitter account in a new window. The same will apply to all the others. If I close that and select Surface for Instagram, we see it takes us to the Surface Instagram account. Now going back into Visual Studio, I did just wanna show you the difference between the abstract syntax and the Excel formula syntax. 
What I've highlighted here is the href value. This is the abstract syntax. You can see it's a little more verbose, uses the operator operands. This can be replaced with Excel formula. Again, Excel formulas are only supported in SharePoint Online, but they're much simpler. So I'm gonna paste that in, and you can see, if I highlight it, the formatting is much, much simpler. It's much more easier to understand. So if you have the opportunity to use it, I highly encourage it. It's a much simpler way to provide your column formatting. Thanks for watching. You can always see more at my blog, warner.digital, or a direct link to the videos at m365.video. To keep updated on all things column formatting, take a look at the two links on your screen. The first is the official Microsoft documentation. The second is a GitHub repository with tons of community samples that you can use by almost just copying and pasting. Thanks again.